What's up? So, welcome to day four. Yep, day four. Where I left off last time, the last episode, was basically we cut the chassis down to where we want it. Yep, that's right. Cut out 10 inches out of the chassis and uh, made it so now it's not quite as long. So, I sleeved it, put some rosettes in there. So this whole thing is sleeved from basically this point here to back here. There's a huge sleeve in there. Put the chassis back in there, welded it back together. Um, and then did that on both sides. So today what we're basically gonna do is gonna hopefully start on the base of the cage. So base of the whole chassis, sorry, not the cage. Um, but before I get started on that, I'll give you a little intro. See ya. All right, so like I said, if you haven't already seen the previous videos, um, what we're doing is building a Turbo R four seat chassis that I've cut down 10 inches to make a two and a half seat chassis, <laughs> basically an extended uh, two seat chassis. Um, what I've done was I cut 10 inches out of it, uh, basically this whole section here that used to be here. I don't, I don't think I have a tube around here anymore to show you. Uh, I threw it out there, but cut it down, welded it back together, and now it's time to start. So if you haven't already checked out those videos, please do. I will put them right up top there um, throughout the video. So if you want to check them out. If not, go back, see episode one, two, three, and uh, end up where we're at right now. So if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe because I'm going to be doing this whole race car chassis build. Um, I, I'm not I'm not a chassis builder. I'm not, uh, I don't even consider myself a real fabricator. So we're gonna do this together. I don't have any plans for this. I don't, uh, I'm not making this out of a kit. This is just something that I'm doing. Um, I picked up a bunch of tube yesterday, uh, right here, and this will basically be majority of everything going on there. Um, everything here is uh, either inch and three quarter or inch and a half, 120 wall mixed in with an 095. Um, just for rigidity purposes, I wish I could do some chromoly, but that's kind of beyond my budget. I don't really have the funds for that, <laughs> nor do I have the skill to weld chromoly because there's some heat treating involved in chromoly and all that stuff. And well, I'm kind of a low budget builder, <laughs> but we're going to make something cool out of it. And I really am excited to share this with you guys. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't. If you haven't already checked out my Instagram uh, or Facebook, that is on there. And a ton more updates are on there as well. So be sure to, to subscribe to my Instagram and Facebook pages. Uh, always daily stories, especially involving this. If you don't want to wait for videos, um, yeah, that'll be there. Ah, let's see. Time to get started on this, man. Um, one thing I, I was talking about um, in the intro was, so I cut the chassis right here. I sleeved it and welded it back together. So that's pretty much there. I still need to flip the chassis over on the other side and start welding stuff on the bottom, but I'm not gonna constantly keep doing that, rotating it back and forth. So I'm gonna do a lot of the stuff on top, and then once the main structure is somewhat built where it's not gonna be tweaking or anything like that, I'll, I'll go ahead and flip the chassis over and start welding all the bottom stuff. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna address this issue. So when I cut out, when I cut out this gusset from the main frame, Cut a little far away, unfortunately, but it gives me an opportunity to plate it. So now what we're gonna do is basically put a plate in here like that and weld everything up here. And then I'll eventually just box it in here 
with a plate underneath as well, just like this on both sides. So you can see this one over here too, setting up there. Uh, so it'll be all boxed in there. And then we can start, start doing the tubes here on the side and start doing some gussets here, here, and some tubes going across all the way across there. So stay tuned to this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. It's a lot of fabrication stuff doing today. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to get started, especially now that I got all that tube. Let's get started. Well, not too shabby. Got that plate on there. Should be pretty damn good. Now it's time to work on the other side. But this right here is gonna be really nice for added strength and protection. Um, like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to box this in eventually. Um, I'm gonna try to weld a little bit this guy here so it doesn't move around too much. More strength, right? But um, yeah, put that there, do the other side, and start adding some tubes. All right, so both plates are now in. And uh, I know everybody's gonna be like, let me see your welds, let me see your welds. Um, I'm not the greatest welder, but, you know, I, that's pretty dang good, I must, I must say. Um, yeah. Yeah, so what I did, same thing on the other side box this thing in here just to give it some added strength because it is cut right right there so this added strength there and then what i'm going to do is add another tube going from here to there similar to this here and triangulate that just for like i said added strength because it's cut there so i want to make it as strong as possible um <laughs> my glove flew off but um yeah i'm uh, pretty excited that's in there um time to get started on wow what do i start on next um i'm probably going to start on these side tubes here um that way I can kind of get that out of the way and then start doing tube here, tube here. Maybe I'll just start with the middle. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to just make this as, as easy as possible, but I want to do as much work as I possibly can while I have the time to shop. It's Sunday. Taryn's out of, she's, she's gone for the day. So that means I get a full day of the shop and I'm pretty dang excited about that because that doesn't usually happen too often. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's cut those cross tubes. Tubes going from here to there and then get those tacked and welded in place. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so sorry about that. I had to take a quick break. Um, Somebody had just called me about my chassis, so I had to pull it out. Um, I said I have it for sale right now, and somebody just called me wanting to come take a look at it. So I had to pull it out, go over a couple things, <laughs> and then I started working on back on this thing, and I forgot, oh shoot, I have to film, <laughs> and I forgot all about it. But what I did was, uh, so far, I went ahead and cut these cross tubes that I wanted, um, that I wanted to put in here. Um, and so this right here is uh, inch and three quarter. This is 095. Um, and what I'm gonna do is essentially just go, ah, there we go. Have that sitting right there. 
to right there. And then we're gonna weld that piece in. So this right here will be a lot stronger of a cross member than these thin guys right here. So it's just an added strength um, to go here. So I'm gonna put one here, one here, cause there are, there's gonna be tubes coming off here to the side. Um, this one here, obviously will go there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an X right there. Um, so what I like to do when I'm doing these tubes, um, obviously I have to um, uh, get my hole saw or my um, t -t 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 today, Junior. Notcher. There we go. Notcher. I got my notcher. Notch these out. And what I like to do, if you can see on there, is I like to bevel the edges just a little bit. Um, so that way the bead of the weld kind of goes in there and it'll lay, lay nice and flat um, and actually penetrate and get in that weld or get in that between both tubes and create that strong bond. So that's a little tip that I like to do when doing stuff. Um, you can just do it straight and flat and that'll work just fine. Um, I personally just like to go the extra step and, and do that. Um, so you can't really tell unless you really look at it. Oh, it's beveled in there and it creates a little bit of a gap and a nice flat surface for that weld to kind of go in there nicely. So let's tack these bad boys up, take some measurements and uh, get these things burned in. Oh, I hate getting distracted midway I'm doing things because then I try to come back and I'm just like, ah, what, where did I leave off at? What did I do? But I really need to get that thing sold right there. So that takes precedence over anything right now. So let's get these tubes in there, burn them in, move on. All right, that's all nice and burned in. Like I was saying, I'm gonna have to just obviously worry about the top half right now until I can get some more tubes in here and then flip the chassis over to do the bottom. Or I might just wait till I'm done with a lot of fabrication to do that, but uh, so I'm not constantly rotating the chassis. I wish I had a rotisserie of some sort <laughs> just to be able to, to, to do that. But um, yeah, those two tubes are in. Um, another thing too, I was talking about beveling out the edges and like as you can see the, the weld actually lays in really nice and, and flat and smooth if you do that. Um, also you always have to make sure that you are stripping out all this mill scale stuff right here. If you don't, the weld isn't going to go and penetrate as good. It might pop and snap and it make your welds look ugly. So always make sure you're welding with nice clean tubes or nice clean metal, um, eliminating anything to basically contaminate your weld and make it weak. So make sure everything's stripped nice and clean. Acetone it if you need to. Um, yeah, I am gonna figure out what I'm doing next. Um, I'm gonna swap out the battery and the camera because that is dying, I can see it. Um, and uh, we'll get right back to it. All right, so right now I have a two inch hole saw in here right now. Um, I'm gonna swap that out for an inch and three quarter. Inch and three quarter. I think this bit has seen better days, but it's all right. Yeah, let's try that. 22 and a half degrees. Um, always good. I like to throw a little bit of WD-40 on here or any kind of lube to get it going. That way you don't strip out your bit. But let's 
go see. See, that, that notcher doesn't work too bad, right? Let's see how bad we are. Hopefully I get you guys at a good angle. I apologize if it's not. Hey, 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 look at that right there. It's not setting straight, but that's pretty dang good. Pretty dang good for, for a guess, right? Probably need some coping on the inside a little bit. But uh, not a whole lot, actually. I'm happy with it. I am going to uh, take my, my grinder and grind this out just a little bit so that way it sits a little bit flat, flatter in there. And uh, take some measurements and start uh, tacking some things up. Cool. That wasn't a very good tack, but it'll hold it in place for me. Um, hang on tight because uh, we all know who that is. Alright, so another delay, but um, this is what I have so far. Got everything in there, so that's sleeved, and we'll gotta put a bead around that. There, these tubes are going that way. Now I gotta do the same thing on the other side. It's just really, I gotta say, the, the best. The, what you have to do the most is keep everything absolutely as square as possible, and that's kind of the toughest spot because. If you measure like a million times, you make adjustments, something else goes out of whack. And uh, yeah, anyways, it is what it is, right? So I got everything pretty much the way I want it to be. And this will be the base of the whole chassis. Is it the exact same thing here, up over there, boom there. And then I'll be able to Put in another gusset from here to there to add more strength and then another one from here to here to add more strength or probably right here um, to give more strength to that corner right there and then continue the x over in the middle because believe it or not the bottom of the car takes a ton of abuse um, well it's not believe it or not because it is true Everybody knows you slam the bottom of the car, but without a proper, um, I guess, proper base or strength in the bottom, it causes the chassis to tweak and twist and, and do all kinds of weird things. So you have to kind of do it slowly and make sure that everything is square, make sure everything is strong, make sure there's no weak points in the chassis. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up burning in these guys and then work on the other side then check to make sure that everything is um, level before I actually burn it in. So I'm doing that first really fast and then get started on the other side. So all the base is done, like I said I was going to do is I put in these tubes here like I was saying, put in the corners, I'm sorry the sides, welded everything up and uh, yeah I'm pretty, 
pretty excited how everything is turning out. This is, like I said, the base of everything. And the best part about everything here is you got to make sure that everything is perfectly level. <laughs> That's right. Um, everything's level, everything's square. Um, yeah. So this is basically going to be the base of everything like I was saying and I mean it, from right now from the looks of it it doesn't even look like the chassis was cut down at all you couldn't even tell I mean I did you could see like obviously the grind marks when you taking off the paint and stuff that's there but that's you know that's not a big deal just because I had to weld but I mean it's pretty good I'm excited so from this point forward it was going to be kind of tough for me because like I said I was waiting for um, somebody who's helped me out Braden Baker um, a Polaris racer he has a, a zone shop and he's building me some uh, mounts for the shock tower so I can basically cut these guys off and replate um, this whole shock tower area so until I get that I can't really do much it kind of stops everything that way because I need to build this before I can build that if that makes any sense to you guys um, but the base is, is done and yeah, I mean, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the back here. Um, yeah, I'm going to probably cut off this here and get rid of this tube here. Maybe just drop it straight down. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if it's even worth it to cut and restyle the back end of it. Um, but once I start doing that... Oh, I still have to, I'm going to put in a gusset, so one tube going from here to there, right there, and as well as an X right here, um, just for some added support, and maybe even a tube right in the center, because that's where the seats are for, or the driver passenger seats are going to be all right there, so I'm going to make sure all the weight's there, that's protected. Um, so yeah, for the next video, I'll probably just be doing some gusset work and things like that until I can get those plates in. Then we can start working on the shock tower. Um, and then from there, start building the whole car itself. Putting in seat mounts, figuring out where the seats are going to be. Um, and then start styling the cage. Um, cage will go up down and then probably drop right here I don't know I want to do something really cool but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the seats first or at least mock them up um, for now and then so when I start building the cage it's nice and low my plan is to have this thing as low as possible and as wide as possible um, I didn't want to go too wide because of the trailing arm mounts up there or back there. I wanted to keep it as factory as possible in a sense, um, which is obviously stronger and better. Um, let's see, yeah. I'll clean everything up too. Uh, like these pieces right here will get cut off and played in. in and capped so it doesn't look like there's a because right now it's sitting here and sitting off so I'll basically cut it so it's straight right there cap it and then the tube will come off here for the door bar going that way ah, so much stuff to do but thanks again for tuning in guys I appreciate it as always don't forget to share like subscribe don't forget to follow me on Instagram and YouTube for all the all the updates 
um, multiple updates a day going on Instagram. Um, and I'm hoping to get at least two videos to you guys here on YouTube a week, um, at least for now until this bill is, is over. So I'm putting in a ton of work right now. It will be pretty awesome. I'm excited to share it with you guys. But for now, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go have an adult beverage and uh, probably eat some food because I haven't done that all day. Appreciate you guys. See you later.